By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at some top tier decks. We're going to look at the finals of the Camel Trophy 2021. And on Tuesday, I already showed you the semifinals. And today we are going to take a look at the finals. And in the finals, we see Jorgo. He's the player from Belgium sitting on the left. He's playing with an Atok deck and he's playing against Frank, the player we also saw battle it out in the semifinals. He's playing with a Robots deck. So these are two decks that are, you can really say these are tier one decks and you're probably thinking, okay, I kind of know these decks, but what I find interesting about this is how will they do against each other? Like what's really their power level when they're playing against another powerful opponent? And the second thing that I find maybe more interesting even is what choices did these players make? Because I can say that both uh, players have made some interesting choices within their deck. So it's not your standards ATOC or standards robot deck, whatever, whatever that is actually, because there are so many different versions of the same deck, you know, around, if you know what I mean. Anyway, these are the players. Um, before I go into the deck deck section, like always, you can also skip that section. I know some people want to just go directly to the games. It's really easy. Check the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps says MTG games. Click on that MTG games and go straight to the action. And as for here, we are going to start with the deck deck. I'm first going to look at the deck of Jorgo, the player from Belgium. Let's take a look at his ATOC deck. And here we see the deck of Jorgo, and this is what we call a lean deck. There is no fat on the bones. I guess the only kind of fun magic card in here is Glasses of Urza. You know, that's really this funny card that actually works really well in a lot of decks, especially with ATOC, because worst case scenario, you can feed the Glass of Urza to ATOC after you've watched, after you've seen the hand. And also when you're looking at the hand of your opponent, you can see, uh, does he have a source? Does he have anything to basically kill my at ATOC after I feed all these artifacts to my ATOC, right? Because that kind of makes you vulnerable, the situation where you attack, you sack all your artifacts to make a huge ATOC and kill your opponent, but then your opponent has a swords, or I don't know, a blue elemental blast or something like that. Glass of Urza can protect you from that. And at the same time, Glass of Urza also works great with, for example, the Armageddon here in the deck of Yorgo, because Armageddon can be such a decider in these matchups, you know? I mean, when we look at Yorgo's deck, like I said, it's a lean deck. So he's gonna put pressure on from the get-go, you know, Vice, Savannah Lines, um, you know, Atok, lots and lots of burn, four bolts, two chains, uh, three side blasts, right? So he's gonna just burn his opponent out. He's gonna deal some combat damage in that process, maybe have an active vice. And then if you can then lock the game by successfully casting an Armageddon, especially in combination with the Disenchants to get rid of any mana rocks, just, just, that's just a very solid strategy, you know? And look at those uh, Ankh of Mishra's there as well. Ankh of Mishra, artifact two to cast. And whenever somebody casts a land, they get two damage, which is really, really deadly against a deck like this because everything Almost everything in this deck hurts the opponent, right? So this is really a difficult deck to play against because from turn one, you are under pressure. I think if Frank wants to win this post board, you know, first off, he needs to be on the play. If, if, if Jorgo is on the play with this one, I think it's going to be super tough for Frank to kind of get out of this. Everything's possible. I mean, especially in old school, you can have really crazy openings that can get you ahead of the game and get change everything. But... It's going to be really tough. It's going to, this, this looks like a very competitive deck, and I'm not surprised we find this deck in, um, you know, in, the, um, in the finals here of the Camel Trophy. Okay, so this is the deck of Jorgo. Take another good look. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this deck. And now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent, Frank Robo Control. And here we see the deck of Frank. So we've already seen this deck in action in the semifinals. If you've missed that one, Take a look at the upload of last Tuesday. It was really, really a cool semifinal match. And there we saw the power of Frank's deck. And now he's made it all the way to the finals at the Camel Trophy here 2021. As you can see, it is a robots deck, but he's decided to play it with white instead of red. Like usually you see these decks with blue, black, and red. And now we see it with blue, black, and white. Now, I'm not a robots player, but I can imagine if you enjoy playing robots, this is really an interesting list to look at and kind of see, oh, he's making those decisions. I've made other decisions. This could be interesting for me. 
Um, when I'm looking at this deck, I'm still seeing that robot's core, right? I'm seeing the four Suchi, the four Triskelions, the two Tetravuses, I see the three Ices. Like, I think this deck still very much has that core idea of, you know, get one of your robots out, copy the robots with a copy artifact, uh, and kind of try to take over the board with your big, strong robots, preferably the Triskelions. I think Triskelion can be really good against this uh, against the deck of Yorgo. You know, he's got Aatox, those are a target. He's got Savannah Lions, those are even a better target for the Trikes. So I see possibilities here. I think the biggest problem for um, for Frank is going to be trying to deal just, just with all the damage that is going to be pouring over him. Like, remember, every card in Yorgo's deck is focused on just dealing really fast, really aggressive, really quick damage. And, you know, the deck of uh, Frank, even though he's got some nice mana accelerators with the Mox and the Lotus, the Felwer Stone, the Soul Ring, you know, the Mishra's Workshop, it still feels and looks slower as the deck of his opponent. So it's going to be up to him to try not to take too much damage early game, try to stabilize the board and then win the game, you know, late game, right? I, th I think that's going to be the strategy of Frank here. Interesting, interesting matchup. I have to say, after uh, looking at both decks, I think Yurgo is a slight favorite, especially when he's on the play before sideboarding. If that's the case, he would be my favorite. And after sideboarding, maybe it'll get more even. Uh, we'll, we'll just have to see, I guess. Um, so without further ado, let's go to the finals. Game number one. Here we go. Yorho, the Aatok player, sitting on the left. Frank sitting on the right. He's actually on the play, Frank. That's good news for him. There we see Savannah Lines by Yorho, a Mox Pearl by Frank, and a pass turn. No Lance. That is tough. I do believe I see a Disenchant in the hand there. There is a Time Walk for Yorho. So already he's kind of taking over the game here. Tapping two. There is an Aatok. At least Frank's finding a land here, passing turn. He needs to get to four ASAP so he can, for example, cast a Suchi. There we see an attack taking another three points of damage, dropping to 13. This is going way too fast. There's an Armageddon. There's an Armageddon. And I'm kind of saying that in a way like, uh, it's kind of done here. Ancestral Recall to top it off. Now he's going to go to 10. I mean, he needs to draw rock solid cards here to get back into this. He has to discard. This is horrible for him. There we see a plateau. So already two mana, and that means he can almost cast everything. Disenchant, that's it. Frank said, you know what? Oh, this is not going to work. Oh, my Lord. And this is actually what I talked about uh, in the deck tech section, what I was afraid of. I mean, he got out of the gates despite the fact that Frank could start. I think the time walk from Yorho was so important because, you know, he took over and then there was the missed land drop by Frank, then there was the Armageddon. I mean, this was hell on earth for Frank. Hell on earth. So hopefully in the second game, Frank, you can, you know, at least draw your lands and, and do something. So uh, let's let these players sideboard and we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two. So here we go. And I'm, I'm kind of rooting for Frank here. I'm always hoping for a third game. Uh, and I'm hoping for an exciting game. I mean, that game number one, it kind of shows the, the, the power of Yorgo's deck. But also, I mean, he drew Time Walk, he drew Ancestral Recall. You know, that was a bit insane. Anyway, game number two, it looks like Yorgo's keeping his hand. And there we go, a Mox Sapphire and a Tundra. So this is at least a good start for Frank here. Hopefully, he can maybe keep ramping up and uh, play one of his robots the next turn or maybe in turn number three. There we see Mox Ruby, again a quick Savannah Alliance and a pass turn. So he kept the Savannah Alliance and there we see a Mishra's Factory and I believe, what card is that? It's kind of hard to see. Okay, he's playing a Time Twister. Oh, that's pretty cool. So both players are gonna shuffle up and I think that's not too bad here for Yorho because he's already got a Savannah Lines and a Mox Ruby, so he gets seven new uh, cards in hand. And I wonder what Frank is kind of hoping for. Maybe his hand wasn't that great, and he's now hoping to draw maybe into some more Moxins so he can kind of accelerate. So he's going to draw seven new ones, and he's already played a land for turn. If he can find some Moxin, he can play it out. I do see a Trike in hand there. And he's just passing turn. That's a bit unfortunate for Frank. You always hope that he may be able to find some Mox and to kind of accelerate even further. Attack with the Lions. Frank's going to 18 here. Let's see what Yorho can do. Seven new cards in hand. Well, eight actually after drawing, of course. And it looks like he's got tons of options. Remember, uh, 
the average casting cost of his deck is two per card. So maybe he'll have like a double vice in hand. That will be a huge killer for Frank, you know. I wonder actually if Jorgel maybe boarded out the vices because he's on um, he's on the draw. I don't think he did actually because he's got some seven draws in his deck. There we see an Ankh of Mishra. Remember, Ankh of Mishra deals two damage whenever you play out a land. So it's a super annoying card to play against. And he's passing turn here, untapping by Frank. Oh man, this is going to be tough. Looks like a time walk there. So that's actually pretty solid. There's a Loa. It's going to take two damage for that. I believe he can actually activate it. Right? Or am I mistaken here? Yeah, he's activating it. Going to go to eight. Then he can actually play a Disenchant. Probably wants to play a Time Walk first. It is interesting because we can kind of peek into his hand and we kind of look and see what he's going to do. Yeah, there's the Time Walk. That makes absolute sense. He's probably not going to be able to use that Tundra. Ooh, that's really good. Red Elemental Blast. Blue Elemental Blast. Okay, this is solid. Good, uh, good play here from Frank. Keeping that Blue Elemental Blast behind. And uh, this is good news. I do believe, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a match here. Still seven in hand, I believe. So he can now draw an extra card, exactly. I wonder what he's going to do. The problem of Frank's deck, it's just a little bit too slow, right? For example, if he disenchants the Ankh, he cannot do anything else. So he's probably going to drop a land and maybe, maybe cast a Suchi if he has one. Okay, there's a Strip Mine. Going to go to 14. He's actually going to strip. Interesting. This is interesting. I wonder what else he's got in hand. Perhaps I would have chosen to... He's not going to disenchant now, is he? Oh, he's going to attack the mana base. I'm not I'm not 100% sure if that's the right strategy because Yorcho's deck, all his spells are so cheap, it's really tough to attack his mana base, actually. I do understand that he wants to... You know, give it a try, but it, it's tough. At least he's denying... Well, actually, he's not denying the rat mana because he still has a plateau. So it's it's difficult. There we see a Savannah Lines here hitting the board. Even more pressure. He's on 12. There's also still that Ankh of Mishra. Every land he plays is 2 damage. This is just really tough. Like, Aloha is great, but when your opponent is playing such an aggro deck, Aloha can just be difficult, you know? He will have to start, I mean, he needs, a trike would be golden, but he doesn't have the mana. If he can find a lotus, you know, crack the lotus, he's got six, he can he can play the trike. We do see his soul ring there. He can cast the soul ring. Hopefully he's got a Suchi at least. He does have a demonic tutor there. I mean, he's got all the cards, but it's just going too slow. Taking two damage again, gonna go to 10. And remember, Yorgo's deck is packed with direct damage and we haven't seen a single bolt, chain, or Cyblast. Man, I mean, he's got five mana, not enough to cast to cast a trike. He could opt to go for Demonic Tutor into Lotus and then into Trike to kill both of the Lions. Passing turn instead, thinking about keeping his Mishra's Factory untapped. Possibly going to try to block with the Factory here. I feel like he kind of has to. He cannot take four more damage. That would mean he goes down to six. That would be bad business. There we see another land being cast. He's going to go to 16. This is tough here for Yorgo. Well, actually not for Yorgo, it's tough for Frank. <laughs> Attacking here with two Savannah lines, I feel like he has to do something, right? I would I would animate the factory. I mean, worst case, he uses a bolt against your factory. Oh, he's got two actually, I kind of missed that one. So both factories getting animated. Two, two, two creatures. And now of course, Yorgo can respond. It looks like he's gonna play a disenchant here, playing a disenchant on one, so he's gonna use that one to pump the other. That's a three, three now. Then we see another disenchant on the other one. Ay, 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 that is rough. What can he do? And he's gonna cast, is he gonna cast disenchant here? Disenchant on the Ankh, I think that's a good decision, but he's gonna drop all the way down to six here. Oh man, this is bad news. And I, I, I think he really was hoping that Jorgo didn't, uh, wouldn't have two disenchants in hand. So that is really tough, but he does. Now, if he can stabilize, going to tap four for a Suchi. It's still, it's not great. I wonder now if Jorgo decides to attack with both. And he gets him to four. 
I wonder, or is he going to just keep his lines at bay? That's now that's not pretty much the decision that Jorge has to make. I mean, he did use two disenchants to get rid of the two factories. So that means he only has two of them left in his 60. So that's the only silver lining for Frank here. The problem is, and Frank knows this as well, I'm playing against red, that means burn and I'm on six. You know, I would be wobbling on my chair if I was Frank. He seems pretty relaxed, by the way. Let's take a look. Let's see what Jorge can do. You're staring at his two cards really, really in the tank, understanding what this is about, the finals of the Camel Trophy. Getting rid of the Loa, I'm not sure if I would have done that, although, because how many cards does he have in hand? Not that many anymore. There's an Underground C. Five in hand. He's got a Trike, I believe, in hand, but he cannot cast it. He needs that extra extra mana. So it was a good decision to use the Strip, but I think I would have used it on the Tundra, perhaps, denying him any white mana. He does still have, of course, or is that a Mind Twist that he has in hand? I thought it was a demonic. Maybe it's a twist. I think he's going to play it now. So we're going to see. Yeah, and it's... Okay, it's a demonic tutor. That's actually better in this case. Because Jorge is only holding one hand, um, one card anyway. The question is now, is he going to look up an Ancestral Recall? Thinking about the mind twist there. I don't think I would choose the mind twist. Looking Even looking at Armageddon, that could be an interesting option as well. There are quite a lot of options... If he would have still had the lower, then Ancestral Recall would have been an obvious one. It still, is a, it still is a good choice, but do you really want to take the risk? Maybe you even just want to get a blue Elemental Blast to counter possible direct damage. This is really tough. There is not one like really fantastic card that he can choose. There are just a lot, a lot of good cards. It looks like he's chosen and he's going to shuffle up. I think I probably would go for, still for Ancestral Recall, I think. Also because he can cast it straight away. So first he's attacking with both of the lines. Interesting choice. He's going to block one, he's going to go to four. Does he have a side Blast, for example? Then the game's over. Oh, not a side. For a moment I thought it was a side Blast. Uh, this is also bad news because it's another creature. So next turn, again, he can attack and deal damage. There we see Ancestral Recall. Interesting. I think maybe I would have played it main phase if I was Frank because you're allowing Yorho to draw another card, possibly finding, uh, you know, a, um, a red elemental blast. And now he's got six mana, so he can cast a trike. He can take out the lions. But maybe he's got way better options. I mean, we can only see part of his hand. Tapping, tapping. What is he going to do here? Tapping the underground, four mana tapped, playing another Suchi. So I guess he doesn't have a trike in hand. I thought he had one, but probably it was uh, shuffled away maybe with the uh, with the time twister. But this is still good though. Two Suchis and he's kind of stabilizing. And there is another underground C. But now he's got to start dealing damage to Yorho. I mean, if he gives Yorho time, he's going to draw into direct damage anyway, and he's still going to win it. So there is pressure here. There's the Abyss. And he's going to pass. So he's going to lose the Savannah Alliance. There's no choice. And now he only has that one Mishra's Factory to block with. So I think that next turn he can start attacking. Does he want to animate? Does he want to attack? Does he want to play aggressive? No, he does not. Tapping three. There's a side blast. Does he have a counter spell? Ooh, there's the mana drain. There's the red elemental blast. There's the blue elemental blast. Wow. Ho, 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 ho. And there's the thumbs up from Yorgo and uh, saying, man, you did this really, really, really well. And uh, wow, 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 wow. That single mana drain is saving Frank's life. Remember, he only has one mana drain in the entire deck. Only one counter spell. Oh, man. Now he can at least attack for four. You know, dealing some damage. Actually attacking for eight. So that probably means going to have the life of Yorho. And I think it means that um, he's got... Okay, and now he's going to cast Armageddon. And that's it. Yorho's saying, okay, that's it. You've won it. 
Wow, what a fantastic game number two. This was, this is the kind of magic you're hoping for in the finals. Two top tier decks, two top players, making the right decision at the right time, knowing what to do and what not to do. And it's 1-1, it's everybody's game. Um, amazing, amazing, amazing. You're a ho, Frank, man. I tip my hat to you guys. Uh, so we'll let these players shuffle up and we'll catch back up with them in the all deciding game number three of the finals of the Camel Trophy. Game number three, the all deciding game. Looks like Frank took a mulligan there, putting a card on the bottom. And I have to say, Yorcho's slight favorite because he's on the play and he's got a quick deck. There we see a copper tablet. So the copper tablet deals one damage during your upkeep. So we see Frank already taking his first point, going to 19. At least there's no vice from the side of Yorcho. So Yorcho also needs to take a damage here, Frank pointing it out. So he's going to drop to 19 as well. But with that soul ring, man, he's got some ramp. If he can drop maybe a lions now, white source lions and also animate factory, he can deal even some more damage. And there we see tapping three, using one to animate, having two left, gonna play Disenchant on the Soul Ring, dealing even more damage. And that Disenchant, I think, is very, very important here for Yorho, because with four mana, Frank would have been able to perhaps play a Suchi. And look at this, he's passing turn. Oh no, Frank, oh no. Oh man, oh man. Is this game already over before it actually started? That's not a big question. We see a Savannah Lines tapping four more. And, uh, oh, actually attacking here and uh, with the uh, Mishra's Factory. So he's going to drop to uh, 13 and to 12. At least there is a Mishra's Workshop. That is something. He's able now to cast a uh, Icy Manipulator. Suchi would have been slightly better here. Also because you cannot use the Mishra's Workshop to um, for the mana for the Icy. You can only use it to cast artifacts. And attack for 6. He's going to drop to 6. He's going to take a damage from the copper. He's going to drop to five, going to drop to two. Oh, this is so bad. I'm kind of, I'm I'm crying a little on the inside right now. I think he should be on two, by the way. Uh, I know they're talking about the copper. I think he already took. Anyway, it's over. It, it doesn't really matter that much. I'm sure you guys were right, by the way, because you were talking about it. But I'm, I'm, Jorgo, first off, really congratulations, man. You've won this fair and square. You're a good player. You're playing with a really good deck, so there's nothing against that. But I was really hoping for an actual game number three. And I think if you're watching this after that game number two, that was an absolute stellar of a game. You know, we were all hoping for a similar something in game number three. Didn't happen. Jorgo's deck, I mean, it's so lean. It, we talked about that in the deck deck. It's so sharp. It's like... It's got edges everywhere and if you play against it and you miss a land drop or you know there's in this case a good disenchant on soul ring or both it's it's basically game over and that's exactly what happened here we see the deck of yorho by the way so a beautiful deck so once again yorho congratulations you're gonna take the camel trophy cap home with you and uh you know what i'm just gonna show the photo of you with the camel trophy uh cap and next year man i'm looking forward to visit this tournament again and to duel for that camel trophy cap uh i was playing in this tournament as well by the way unfortunately didn't do very very good with my tammy spellbook but still it was a fun tournament a big thank you and shout out to bjorn for organizing this man it was it was lots and lots of fun also to all the other players all the people that were there at this event it's just great to be able to play magic in real life again it's just i love online play but real life it's so much better it's so so much better anyway uh i wanted to thank you for watching another episode right here on timmy talks and if you like what you see please leave a like that really helps the channel if you're new to the channel welcome to timmy talks please consider subscribing because also that helps and also leave a comment let me know what you liked about the video let me know what maybe you didn't like about the video and what i can possibly improve in the future um, now if you want to support me and if you say okay you know timmy i want to help you keep doing what you're doing the best thing that you can do is actually join timmy talks on patreon so there's an info card appearing right now click on that info card and that will take you straight to the timmy talks patreon page and you can already join for just one dollar and the cool thing is uh, we have a discord we do trades there we talk about magic there but we also organize tournaments uh, just for the channel members and patrons to thank them for their support. So if you want to join a Timmy Talks tournament, you know, that's also an option by becoming a patron. And last but not least, your name will be on the end scroll. So at the end of every video, you see an end scroll. 
and your name will be on there. How cool is that? Talking about that, let's go to the end scroll and let's take a look at the fantastic, the wunderbar channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks. Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomaar gezien.